What's up everybody, it's Dan the Bugman. I'm finally back with another bug video. I am here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada at the 2021 World Pest Control Convention, AKA Pest World is what they've been calling it. But I'm here uh, with my roommate, colleague, and buddy, Harry Griffin. Hi, Harry. So we're here for the next four days. This convention is basically a conglomeration of a bunch of different pest control mines uh, throughout the country. And it says throughout the world, I don't know how many people from out of the US are here, but we may meet some people. We just got here today. Um, this is our first day here. So over the next four days, there are basically two parts to this convention. Um, there are lecture style parts that's over here to my left, but basically there's a bunch of auditoriums. So every afternoon there's speakers for 45 minutes. You can go to any different lecture that you'd like to go to. So there's one about marketing, there's one about ants, there's one about termites. So Harry and I are going to split up and go to those later today. We're going to take notes and let you guys know what we learned at those and it should be some pretty cool stuff. There's speakers from across the country that come here and they, you know, they do this stuff for a living like we do and they're experts in their field. So they're going to teach us what they know and we're gonna learn a lot of cool stuff. So the second part of this convention is very large conference rooms set up with hundreds of booths from different vendors and companies across the country that are all coming together and we just you know, talk about pest control stuff and spread ideas. You know, there's software companies, there's marketing companies, there's you know, pest control companies. They show us you know, their new products. Um, we do some marketing with them and catch up and all that cool stuff. So I'm very excited for this video. We're gonna be filming everything that happens for the next few days and I'm going to show you guys everything I learned and it's going to be a good time. So stay tuned. Okay, good morning everybody. It is a beautiful Thursday morning here in Las Vegas. Um, we are in the hotel room, just hanging out, getting ready for the day. We just got back from working out. There's our beautiful view of all the trees and beautiful desert landscaping. I was going to recap what we did yesterday um, because I didn't get to film much because it was a very busy day. So we flew out of Nashville at about 7.30 a.m. We had to get up at five something, so it was a early start to the day. We flew over here, landed, checked in the hotel room, and then we walked downstairs. And I'll show you guys some videos and pictures of this hotel slash casino slash mall, but this building is massive. I feel like the whole block is just one massive building. Um, actually, it's more than a block but everything's connected here. We walked downstairs, half a mile, half a mile walk from our hotel to the actual pest world. We walked down there, got all checked in and registered, and then we took a lap around all the booths. I'll show you guys some videos of that here in just a second. We got oriented with how everything was set up. There are a lot of booths, a lot of people tried to talk to us, a lot of people tried to sell us their new products, um, but we were just trying to you know, get set up, but there were a lot of people approaching us, which was cool. So we ate lunch down at the convention center and then for the next three, three and a half hours we were in classes. So these classes are speakers that are experts in their you know, perspective field of pest control, ranging anywhere from marketing to entomology. They were giving these lectures 45 minutes to an hour and a half long about you know, just different stuff that, that can help us out. So these classes we weren't allowed to film or anything so I'm going to recap. Um, some of the cool things we learned yesterday. So the first class I went to was a uh, website class and it was called Does Your Website Pass the Grunt Test? And basically the jive of that class was the grunt test, it's not like an actual test, it's um, kind of just a funny way of wording. Is your website simple and clean? The grunt test is basically saying like, oh could a caveman that just grunts come up and read your website and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna call you guys, uh, uh. That was the grunt test. It was really interesting because I do all of our websites for our companies, so, so I am very interested in how websites work and how people, you know, view the page and what, 
you know, motivates them to click on this or that. So that was very interesting. Learned a lot and I am definitely going to be using these things that I learned into my website. So that was very cool. It focused on the home page and make sure, you know, there's a call to action button. Uh, the next class Harry and I went to together, it was directed by an entomologist. I feel like he was a little too smart for his own good. He could probably name off every pest insects by their scientific name and their life cycle and biology. Focus on parts of pest control that really don't affect us that much. So there were a bunch of these, um, they're called powder post beetles, but he went off on a tangent on all these different species of, of beetles and how they can affect wood. That was interesting, but it's probably not something I'm going to use very often. Um, he touched on carpenter bees and carpenter ants, which are very, very common for us, Kentucky area. So that was cool, um, but it was a lot of stuff I had already known. So just a refresher is, is always good. Um, and the last class I went to, um, that one was very interesting. It was, the last class was for um, graduate students at the University of North Carolina State, no, North Carolina State University. These students were studying bed bugs. Each of them were doing their own studies of bed bugs, which is really cool to see. There's not, you know, a ton of people my age, not a ton of people Harry and I's age that are into pest control and actually care. It's an older industry and, you know, not a lot of people not a lot of young people are getting into it, so it is cool to see um, other people my age that care about it. So yeah, that's about the recap from yesterday. I'll take you guys along with me today and you guys can see what we're doing today. Hello everybody. I just hiked to the top of this very small mountain. More of a hill, but uh, it's a mountain to me because I'm not used to all those big mountains. But yeah, it was, it was a pretty good hike, surprisingly. Um, all my friends are down there in the little red chairs that look like ants. And I was looking for bugs to show, showcase some Nevada bugs, but I don't see any around here. Apparently they're in a drought, so they might not have any bugs this time of year. I don't know. I saw a grasshopper, but that's about it. Maybe there'll be some rattlesnakes or scorpions later yeah we just rode those little red bikes so i'm gonna go ahead and hike on down now so bye bye all right guys so it is saturday um we're flying out tonight the last two days have been pretty busy uh just a whirlwind of things to do and learning and talking to people about bugs and exploring Las Vegas. I'm finally just gonna recap some of the things that I've done and go over what we did. Last time we were able to sit down like this, um, it was the second day, the morning of the second day, that was Thursday. I recapped what we did on the Wednesday. We were here at Pest World. That Wednesday was the travel day. We flew in, checked into the hotel, then we went over all the classes that I took that afternoon and how everything was set up. So I've taken three classes since then, so I've had a total of six classes here at Pest World. Um, but more importantly, I talked to a bunch of suppliers, vendors, and even most importantly, other pest control people like myself. These people own companies that are 10 times, 100 times larger than the companies I manage for my parents and run. All across the country, there's pest control. and Everyone does it a little different. You know, pest control in California is different than pest control in New York, is different than pest control in Florida. Um, it is called Pest World. I haven't met anyone from not in the US. So that was a little disappointing, but maybe they'll call it Pest USA, but that just doesn't sound as cool. The best thing I took from this trip was the overall camaraderie that really this organization has. Pest World is sponsored by MPMA, the National Pest Management Association, and there's a couple other you know, pest control associations in the US, but um, everyone, you know, whether you're in the organization or not, everyone seems to come together um, at this meeting and really connect, um, share ideas. Everyone does it a little different. You know, I had things I heard, I was like, oh, well, I probably wouldn't do it that way, and then I heard a bunch of ideas that were like, wow, like, why didn't I think of that? You know, that's genius. So I've got a long list of things that I want to implement in our company, which is very exciting. And I'm going to talk to you guys about some of those real quick. And I'm also about to talk about the classes that I took yesterday and what I learned from those classes. One thing that was fairly disappointing about this experience uh, for me personally was 
I was not allowed to videotape inside the exhibit hall with all the booths or videotape any of my classes. So like I wasn't planning on videotaping the classes, but I was definitely planning on recording some of these booths that were set up inside the main like convention center that show that you know these booths are showing all these new products. I was able to get a couple pictures and um, video clips here and there, but I wasn't really able to do this like I am with you guys, you know, talking to someone. Um, so that was a little disappointing. But I'm still going to tell you guys what I learned and some of the cool things uh, I found um, inside the convention center. That's exciting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and recap the three classes that I took yesterday. Okay, so the first class I took yesterday, um, it was titled, How to Prevent Liability Issues, which is great. I, I don't personally own these companies that I work for my parents yet, but um, you know, I don't want my parents to get sued, and when I own a company one day, I don't want to get sued myself, so this I thought was very important. I was fairly disappointed in this class, actually. It wasn't super uh, insightful. She really just listed off things that were very obvious and not a super organized format. Um, she talked about, you know, documentation. Documentation is always super key um, in pest control in any service you're, you're providing, you know. As long as you write down correctly what you've done, and if you did it correctly, if you write it down and the customer signs it, then there's not a whole lot that they um, can say, oh, you didn't do this, or you didn't do that. That was the big one, and I, I already knew that. So it's good to be refreshed from a professional. Um, this, this woman works for Orkin. Um, Rollins is Orkin's owner. Orkin is, you know, one of the largest, it, it is the largest pest control um, firm in the United States and the world, I would assume. I'm sure she knows her stuff, but maybe she just didn't want to get super detailed, but um, she talked about um, safety issues, documenting. When we put out like rodent bait stations, um, rodent bait is one of the things that we use in pest control that can be harmful to humans. You know, if you get some insecticide sprayed on your arm, it's nothing's going to happen. Um, but if you eat a whole block of mice bait, uh, you're probably not going to feel very good. So that's a safety issue, of course, but I, I knew how to, you know, properly implement bait station. Personally, we don't prioritize locking up our vehicles and maybe we should, but haven't run into any issues. We are, you know, I'm out of rural Kentucky. There's not a lot of thieves or people rummaging through our stuff, which is good. Uh, that's why I'm not a big city boy, but that's besides the point. The next session I took was about brown recluse spiders. She gave me some interesting facts about brown recluse spiders that I didn't know off the top of my head. Um, they peak from May to July when that's when their mating season is. That's when they lay their eggs. Um, all spiders, almost all spiders have egg sacs. Um, inside brown recluse egg sacs. Um, there's only about 20 to 50 eggs per sack, which is low for spiders. Brown recluse spiders also molt six to seven times in their lifetime, which I didn't know that off the top of my head. I knew it was, you know, a few times they shed their skin. They also have a two-year lifespan and they build erratic webs, which I did know. Um, I made a video about brown recluse spiders. That was the last video I posted, actually. I'll make it pop up above here, but that was a good video. I got pretty in-depth. I was pretty happy with how that video turned out. Uh, another interesting thing about brown recluse spiders, and this is also true with bed bugs, they tend to have some similarities, which is very interesting. I think it's just the nature of how those pests evolved. They're not related in any way, but brown recluse spiders and bed bugs can live about six months without food. Always something to keep in mind when I'm out in the field looking at these pests. Final presentation I went to yesterday was about ticks. Uh, ticks are arachnids. They're in the same family as spiders. They're in the same family as spiders, so that's a little different when you're treating for ticks. And ticks, um, we talked about in this session, you know, spread diseases more than, you know, the average pest. Um, they're a parasite, an ectoparasite, so, you know, same as bed bugs, mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, they feed on blood from other mammals. Um, and humans are one of the things that ticks feed on. Um, the smaller ticks usually feed on smaller animals like rodents, and as the ticks mature, they feed on larger animals like humans and deer and dogs. But this session, basically, they covered, you know, just a recap of ticks in, in the first half of the session, and then they talked about how to treat for ticks and how to sell a, tr a tick treatment to a customer. Um, some of the sales methods that they were suggesting I didn't necessarily agree with. And they also talked about how you know ticks have like an ew factor. Same with bed bugs and mosquitoes. Like you don't want a, a bug you know crawling up your arm. You can price that stuff a little higher than you normally would, even if it takes you a little less time. It's an important service and people really want it done. So supply and demand. You just charge a little more for ticks. So that was that's the recap of the three sessions I went to yesterday. I'm gonna quickly recap 
the, the other part of the convention, which was the exhibit hall with all of the booths set up. I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time, and like I said, I wasn't able to videotape anything in there because that was the rule, unfortunately. But there were, there were companies from software companies, chemical producing companies, truck companies that sell rigs, and just a bunch of crazy technology. And, you know, everything's so technology driven these days. There's, you know, cameras you can put inside of um, wildlife stations. Another thing I looked at is this really cool mosquito trap that lures them in just with the basic shady water area where they try to lay their eggs and then they get trapped on this glue board. Buy one of these and just try it out myself at my yard. Personally, I have a bunch of mosquitoes at home. I talked to our software company that we used about an issue that we were having. It was pretty interesting because I came up to them with this issue um, that we we're having with uh, how the software maps our appointments. You know, it puts it on a map every day. We drive efficiently to get there. And I brought up this issue to them and at first they were like, okay, you know, we'll tell you what's going on because I figured it was something I was doing incorrectly that our company was doing wrong, but apparently this is an issue and I found it for them. That was pretty cool. I felt like I gave them some helpful information. Uh, they gave me a nice Yeti cooler and a blanket. Uh, I don't know if they were trying to say, oh, I'm sorry, this is happening, here you go, or they were saying thank you for you know, showing us this issue, here's this in return. So that was a good conversation. I got to talk to them yesterday. It's Saturday now, um, everyone's left. After the convention was over, there was a pool party right behind me. There was a band over there to the left and, you know, tables and drinks set up. It was very nice. It was, it was sponsored by one of the chemical companies that makes all, a bunch of products. Free entertainment, I mean, we paid for you know, the trip and the registration fee. So that's where it was built in the price. But I mean, yesterday afternoon, it was, I mean, it's been beautiful here in Las Vegas all week. It's been sunny and 75 and 80 degrees every day. So I am not looking forward to going back to the 30 degrees we have in Kentucky right now, but we're flying out this afternoon. But it, it was a great trip overall. I learned a ton. I talked to really like three um, companies. They were out of Ohio. They kind of knew each other, but they were all different companies. I, I was able to talk to them about how they did business and Kentucky and Ohio are fairly similar. So as far as regional goes, so a lot of the regional practices can be applied to both areas. Yeah, these, these companies are some of the biggest in the country, you know, within the top 100 companies in the country. Based on size, they've got anywhere from 50 to 100 employees. So it was really cool to talk to them. They do things a little different. I, I won't get into the details of it because it probably doesn't mean anything to the average viewer, but it was really cool, very insightful to talk to these people. Once in a lifetime experience, I would say, but maybe once in a year experience. Pest World is every year, so next year's in Boston. Um, I might go back to that, hopefully. Um, we'll see how everything is at that point. Yeah, it was just, it was really surprising how open everyone was when I just asked them questions like, hey, like, what do you guys price for this? How do you do this? Like, what do you tell your customers when this happens? And they didn't see me as competition. They were just, I think they were just happy, you know, someone cares enough to ask them and these people do this for a living and so they're passionate about it. It was really cool to have other people like that that are passionate about, you know, not just their work, but a career that we share, you know, the same interest in. So that was really great to talk to those people. There weren't a bunch of young people like myself. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. Of course, always. My parents own the company I currently work for, so they give me a lot of freedom with what I do, which means I have a lot of responsibility also. I've been super busy. I started making YouTube videos a few months ago, and I, I really wanted to start making more videos, but I've just been super busy, like so busy, I can't even fathom how I'm gonna make more videos without it disrupting my career. But, good news is, I used my brain and I thought of a solution, and starting in 2022, and maybe a little sooner, we're gonna switch around the responsibilities in our company. So I'm going to do field work, going to people's houses most of the time, and then the rest of the time I'm going to be focusing on making videos, which is great. Um, my brother-in-law and also my friend work in this company, and they're going to take over my responsibilities I have in the office. Long story short, I will be making a lot more videos, um, so subscribe and let me know what you want to see, or don't, because I've got a bunch of ideas that are going to be great videos. Anyways, so I guess that's about it. 